Thank you. So before we get started here, um, I'd like everybody to take out a pen. Take out grab something to write with, okay? And if you, got a, you don't have a piece of paper in front of you, a pen and a piece of paper in front of you, it's fine. You can do it on a tablet too. That works just as well. And I'm going to ask you to write down your answers right off the top of your head right now what your perception is, okay? And then I'm going to get into it. The first question I have is, what percentage of training do you believe is technical diving over all How big is the technical diving certification market compared to the whole industry? Write a percentage down. Okay? The next one I want you to uh, write down is how many closed circuit CCR, or how many rebreather certifications you believe were issued by TDI in 2015? Write a number down. Levels just Everything. Every rebreather certification we've done in 2015 globally. Okay? Everybody good with that? Now hold on to those numbers. Okay? So, thank you for doing that. So, a little bit about me. Um, I've been in the industry for a little while. Uh, as she said, started uh, wreck diving in the North Atlantic, um, cut my technical diving up there, mixing gases out of the backs of places we weren't supposed to do that, uh, and um, fell in love with it. So have been involved with the industry quite a, quite a while. Uh, and in that time that I've been involved in the industry, especially in my le uh, level at the training agency, everybody always asks me, how big is it? How many do you do? What do you do? What's the size of it? And in the industry, Nobody ever really answers that question. It's always tiptoed around. Well, something happened um, in September of this past year, and uh, I went to a conference outside the diving industry. For those of you who run companies and are involved in companies or anything, and you want a perception of the way people are learning and buying, I highly recommend you go to this conference. Okay? It's called Content Marketing World, Worldwide. It changed everything for how we approached our company from this point on. And I went, uh, during that time frame, there's a thing, there's a phrase they say. Somebody asks, you answer, okay? TDI is taking the approach this year. We're gonna be insanely honest in the diving industry. So, any question you wanna ask me today, about anything we do, I'm gonna answer it. If I don't know the answer, I'll figure it out and I'll get back to you. That's one of the big reasons um, I've been asked these questions over the years. So, why am I going to do it? Why are we going to do this? People have asked me this over, over, and over again. It surprises and delights, and we wanted to get people's attention. Okay? People have asked for this information. This information will be released. Actually, I'm handing it to Divers Alert Network right after this, the raw data, so that they can do the crunch numbers on it. Um, but people have asked for it. It shows that we've got some confidence. Yes, we're comfortable in what we're doing and where we are. We're comfortable in the position in the marketplace that we're at. Um, and it's ultimately bound around building trust. Nowadays, if somebody comes up to you and asks you a question and you give them a BS, they go, go, go. But what are they going to do right afterwards? They're going to Google it and they're going to find the answer. 70% of purchasing decisions are made before somebody talks to somebody else. That's one of the statistics that came out of the conference. What? 70%. When you go to buy a car these days, you know all about the car before you talk to the salesman. And when the salesman comes up to you and starts doing, oh, and the, you know, gives you a wheel and deal, you don't want to deal with them anymore. You go to the person who's going to make the process the easiest along the way. It will get rid of people. It, it, the reason why we do this, they ask you an answer. People that don't want to do business with us or don't want to participate or don't want to be part of something bigger. So I'm not interested in that. If somebody wants to come along with us and releasing information, come on board. If they don't, I'm just going to continue down the road we want. It gives us the people that want to participate in what we're trying to do, and I'll get, uh, that'll be tied up at the end. And it focuses on things that we can win. Okay? 
And when I'm talking about this We Can Win, it's about changing the way the diving industry has been working for the last 20 years. And that's the big reason why we're doing this. So let's look at a few certification questions I've been asked over the years. What's the most popular course? Is technical diving growing? That seems to be the big question that everybody asks. Which rebreather do instructors teach on the most? Guys interested in seeing some numbers? You sure? I don't know if I want to hit next slide, to be honest with you. Okay? So let's talk about the data and how it's collected. All of our certifications are processed on a global database. Every rating, every instructor logs into our system or a regional office, and they use the central database for issuing that certification. So it's all networked together. If you go take a course in Thailand with an instructor who's from China, who um, has an address in the UK, when the card is issued to you, it's in the main database and we have that information directly, right when it's issued. It's all done live. Every office, you can't issue a TDI certification without going through this process. If you have an in-store C card printer, they log in, it's logged in the system. It's all central database driven. Um, and the system has been in place since 2011. That's an important point because I'm really confident of my data from 2012 on, or actually mid-2011 on for the individual courses, okay? I'm not confident on the individual courses prior to that because we had some data um, bringing in old databases um, and spreadsheets that didn't work so well. So the data from 2011 is really good. I've broken it up into four different course categories, okay? It segments when I'm going to be talking about it. First off, open circuit will cover all of our intro to tech, nitrox, advanced nitrox, heliotrox, extended range, trimix, advanced trimix, and side mount, okay? TDI only. SDI's nitrox numbers are not in this data, okay? Cavern, we've broken it up into cavern, intro to cave, full cave, and advanced rec, and that includes if you're doing CCR uh, intro to cave. That number will be in this, um, this data set. Our service courses, blender, advanced blender, O2, manufacturer specific courses that we put out, okay? are all included in that. And then Rebreather, I've done, are all courses in our system are Unix specific, but they're broken down into either SCR, Aerodilion, Aerodilion Deco, Mixed Gas, or Advanced Mixed Gas. Okay? There are some other ways other people talk about it in RF3. We put out Mod 1, Mod 2, Mod 3. I didn't want to do that because it would kind of confuse the data. Um, I'm actually going to let Divers Alert Network do that. Um, <laughs> So, there are the numbers. You don't have to write them down because they're going to be published. Okay? So you can take a look at what you wrote down on that piece of paper, and that's the total number of certifications issued. Okay? Worldwide, global. It's from 2008 to 2015. I'm very confident of the total number of certifications, not the individual course numbers from 2008 prior. And I'm going to use 2008 because I tie it into something later on, which you're going to see. Kind of interesting there. That's the current market. If I continue that number further towards 2004 and beyond, it's more of the same. Okay. Brian, what caused the spike in 2011? <laughs> you asked a question, I'm going to answer it. <clears throat> uh, there was another training organization that was having a lot of trouble issuing certifications. <laughs> so, all right. So we saw a little bit of a, a bounce there. TDI open circuit certs during that time frame. 
This is all nitrox, advanced nitrox, deco, um, uh, trimix, advanced trimix. Okay? Most popular course being uh, the nitrox course, and then it cascading down from there. 9,000 certifications globally. Those are the total certs from 2011 to 2012, so you can, you can see the cascading effect, okay? Most popular courses in nitrox, advanced nitrox, deco, okay? Um, for those of you teaching advanced trimix, you can see your pool is worldwide pretty small. That's four years of data, <laughs> okay? Overhead certs, 13, 13, 15, uh, 15. We've seen a spike in 2014 and 2015. We're seeing that increase on that. We moved to Florida. Overhead certs are cavern and cave, right? Cavern, cave, and advanced rec. I put advanced rec into that category. And it includes CCR, intro, uh, cavern, CCR, uh, intro to cave, and CCR full cave. Okay, so it doesn't matter the apparatus that you're using, you're in an overhead environment. Okay? We don't care what they're breathing on as long as they're breathing. Hmm? We don't care what they're breathing on as long as they're breathing. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, uh, Chris, I didn't put ice diving because that's SDI. No, it's all right. It's a, I'm going to ask. You ask, I'm going to answer. Okay? How about mine? Mine, mine is in there too. Yes our mine diving certifications. But that mine diving number, there you go. <laughs> 51 worldwide. I think they all came out of the mine quest up in Newfoundland. <laughs> so what's interesting I saw about this number uh, when I looked at it is CCR full cave represents 67 worldwide compared to full, uh, full cave diver, which is 1,300. So you can see what are people using to go into caves? Are they using CCRs or are they using open circuit? They're learning on open circuit and then they move over. And this if, is the sum for five years? This is the total sum for those five years. Okay? It's not very big at all. Where am I, overhead? <coughs> Service courses? There's more of the consistency? Yes. Yep. It do, this does include the hog and it does include the AUP uh, numbers for those service courses you guys are doing. So that's remained consistent. Um, when I looked at this number and this data came up, I went, oh man, we should need to get, do better at getting these courses out there because there's less and less people learning and just learning in the back of their stores. This well, is when's how you. Last time, when's last time KDI's updated? That particular that product. Material. And that material goes back to. Yep, right. Well, it's on the queue now. It's late. That's one of those ones that uh, um, Lauren and I were discussing last week is uh, how are we going to get this one done. We just got done with the visual inspection program like, two years ago. been rolling that out, so we're going to use a lot of that to revamp. So, service courses, there's a breakdown. There, Edge Hog. And the AUP course, I think, came on this year. It's about a year. Last, last 2015. Yeah, so that's. They did, uh, they did oceanic and air service tech when I was a rep about years ago. Yeah, but this is just, two, it, it wouldn't be in the 2011, 2015. Okay. All right, rebreathers. Here we go. So these are all the rebreathers in the last five years that we've issued certifications under. Axomyth. Oh, you got to love that type. It's supposed to be the Azimuth. Um, <laughs> so, so um, it doesn't matter under our rebreather models whether um, these the certifications or whatever. Uh, whether the way I compiled these numbers is I said, okay, I got all these different rebreathers. What could we do? Well, I decided. The pie chart on this one would be so crazy if I did each individual unit. I did it by manufacturer. So Inspiration Evolution um, are all under an AP, 
Okay, Prism 2 and Explorer are all under AUP. Okay, so you can see that company is involved in developing of CCRs because if they changed it, because they're constantly updating these material, uh, these rebreathers, and they're coming out with new names. Okay, I think it's a marketing thing. That's what Drager did back in the uh, back in 1990s. You know, they kept on switching it, and then they had a black bag. So, um, so I compiled all this info. These are all the different units that we've offered certifications on. There's a total number of um, CCR certifications. Are the red? And the lower one are the blue, uh, SCR the blue. The Explorer numbers are the blue on the bottom. Okay, the majority of that um, in that number there is from the uh, AUP Explorer. But you can see 1,500 certifications for closed circuit rebreathers during that time. Okay, this is uh, a five-year five run. There's the percentage of breakdown by market, by manufacturer. 31% from 2012 to 2015, 31% of the total certifications for the company um, were done under AP, global. 17% at Hollis, ISC, that's Megalodon, uh, 905. Poseidon 347. This is four years of data, so um, other manufacturers were not really, it does include their 2015 numbers, uh, but they were not, um, uh, they, didn't, they don't have four years of data. They may only have one year because they've been in the industry only one or two years. Okay, but we put them in. But these were the top ones that we are issuing certifications under. Um, so yeah, we have that information. I can drill it down if you're interested uh, on an individual level because it's a mountain of data. It took me about a month to compile all the information in a presentable format. Anybody who's worked in statistical, it, it's, it can be challenged on so many different levels. So we started with one idea and I came up with another on how to present it um, and put it out. Do you have any so. plan to make that raw data just no, I'm not going to put the raw data from confidentiality stuff. Well, I mean, strip the PII, strip the people's names, right? Well, when, when I hand it to Divers Alert Network, the only, uh, and so they can do their studies, the only thing I've asked them to do is just give, yeah, thank you, you know, provided data they set provided by TDI, um, and if other people participate. As far as opening it up to the general, it's a lot of information. Um, for people running studies and stuff, yeah, we're going to be open to, you know, hey, I'm running a study on this, okay. What are you looking for? That, am I gonna just put it out for the world for people to come up with their own information? Probably not just in a general open forum, but um, on an individual, on a specific base for something that's gonna benefit the industry. Yeah, okay. But the data set, each certification is tied to a unit, which is tied to an instructor, which is tied to a facility, which is tied to a region, which is tied to a representative, all the way down. It just it's one line, it's, it's one gigantic line of Excel. This is what happened in 2015. So I wanted to see what the breakdown was going to be and what happened in that one year, what's going on with manufacturers, okay? Hollis moved up, JJ moved up, um, ISC maintained, SF2 came, was moved up, Revo maintained, uh, AP um, has lost some but that's because there's more, there's a, a d increase in a little bit of numbers, the total number of certifications. What's the breakdown between open circuit TDI courses and closed circuit, or rebreather? Let me rephrase that, rebreather, that includes SCR or CCR, okay? Of almost, well, 18% in 2015 were our CCR certs compared to our open circuit. Majority of, majority of divers are doing the um, looking at open circuit and technical diving first, and then they make and then 18% of them move on to CCR. There's a percentage breakdown. It's another way of presenting it. 82 to 18 for 2008 or 2015. That's total distribution for all the certs and how they're broken up. 71% of all the issued certifications are open circuit with TDI. 13, 11. So the overhead 
overhead open circuit is almost as big as closed circuit. To give you an idea. These are global numbers too. Yes, we moved to Florida. Overhead did increase for us, but we are doing tons of cert we are not tons, but we're doing certifications and all the other cave regions around the world. So, um, and a lot of our numbers come from outside North Florida for overhead. So what's wrong with the data? I throw these numbers up on the wall. Well, what's how is it in? Um, what do we have the issues with it? First off, there's only TDI numbers up here. Okay, I'm gonna be point blank. I don't have any other data from any other training organizations. So can that skew it? Yeah, it can. But we have to start somewhere. By how much? That's the point. There's a lot of other training agencies out there that are doing different things. In particular on the CCR stuff, I wanted to I wanna definitely say some manufacturers work with other agencies more often. Okay? So that percentage of breakdown within the CCR market. That's not truly representative. That's a start, but that's not truly representative of what I believe is there. I would love to be able to see that down the road, but we have to get everybody else participating or other companies participating to get a much better idea. Okay? And then in some cases, we only have a really small data set. So, um, you know, there's going to be issues with percentage there. Show you in just a sec. So, what I wanted to show is I wanted to, uh, I wanted to compare it to some information that was readily out there. This is the DEMA certification census numbers that are available by DEMA um, it put out each year. Okay, these are the total number of open water divers qualified in the United States each, during each one of those years. Okay, 152,000 to 142,000 in 2015. Now, for those of you in the industry, numbers just came out for... Uh, the first quarter, we're actually going back up on open water. Our first quarter, our first quarter in 2016 was better than our first quarter in 2015. Okay, so total number of water, open water. This is only SDI, SSI, and PADI um, data that is submitted, and then um, it's only the United States. So I took that. Drop the numbers in there. To show you just how big the technical market is. Well, that comes as big as the technical side of the market is through TDI. Through TDI, correct. And it's this is TDI's global numbers. This is US only open water numbers. Okay, which is going to skew the data set, all right? But what I looked at is I wanted to look at trends, okay, and curves. And I, as I looked at that, the curve, if you, uh, I don't know if it's got a pointer. The curve here, you can't see it well here, but the numbers follow the same, okay? That was what was most telling to me. If the trends are the same, we're looking at approximate size. Okay? Okay. So what do we have? The technical diving realities, things that we have to um, look at. How do we grow the technical market? Market size has remained pretty consistent over the last 10 years. Hasn't changed. Okay. CCR and SCR courses are just replacing people who were taking open circuit courses in technical diving. They're not increasing the size of the sport. Okay. So what do we do about this? How do we change it? In order for technical diving to grow, open water market needs to grow. We have to focus on the open water market to grow the total pie. A lot of us in here, all technical divers, all involved in the sport, all selling technical diving equipment, teaching technical diving classes. We love it. It's the pinnacle. We like teaching these programs. We're the tops in our fields. We need to help and support that open water market if we want to maintain 
what we're doing in technical diving. That's what that curve shows. When the open water market drops, technical market's going to drop. Okay? Dive charts like this are great to help, uh, help promote the sport, but we need to do more outreach outside the industry. Okay? The only outreach outside the technical market we get that gets mainstream is fatalities all over the place. That's our PR. Somebody else picks it up, CNN runs on it, another diver dead. Okay? That's what our outreach are. Or shows like the uh, uh, trade shows like this or cave and shipwreck shows. So how do we break in to that market? Everybody says, well, we can't get a TV show and all this stuff, right? That's a lot of money. Goes back to that conference I told you about, content marketing. If you write about things that are important and people are searching, somebody walks in, walks up to you, one of your students walks up to you and asks you a question, write it down. Then write the answer and put it on your blog. It's that simple. Because somebody else is going to ask that question and they're going to respond. Or they're, they're going to find it. 70% of purchasing decisions are made before they talk to somebody. Okay? Our whole strategy that I said has changed, we have a question. They ask the answer. Once every two weeks, our marketing guy goes around and I say, okay, I've got a list of questions. Um, what questions were you asked over the phone this week? Write about it. Okay, write about it. John, I'm going to call out John here a little bit. John wrote an article in September, I think it was, um, and it was actually kind of funny. The pre previous presentation, they talked about um, women in diving, and they had to talk about um, there was no there was no information there, or we need to put information in books that are specific um, to people, okay, or specific to genders and stuff like that. John recognized there's no information because he couldn't find it on how to properly put on a P-valve. So he wrote an article about it, and it took off. Well, Lauren said, well, what about women? They had no information out there. She wrote an article about it. Guess what pages are getting hit? Because nobody wants to ask that question. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when you turn around and you write about this stuff, it doesn't cost anything other than our time and doing something we love to talk about it, and that will promote our sport. And it, that's the financial buy-in. The financial buy-in is getting the information out of our heads and communicating it. Social media takes care of it. People say, well, you know, maybe we need to get this, we need to invest that. I can tell you right now, we implemented this with our company, and the number of hits on our website has skyrocketed in the last six months. Okay? We are getting hits, 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 hits constantly. Our Google Analytics are going through the roof just by writing articles and responding to questions that people are asking. It's that simple. Are you putting any requirements on your instructors then globally or encouragement to do this? To write? Oh, we're, we're asking our members to in, uh, constantly, everything. Hey, you want to write an article? You want to, you, I'll give you my card. You can write an article for us. Okay. My hope, why do we do this? We got to be open with sharing our information. For so long in the 26 years that I've been involved in the diving industry, it's always, I'm not going to tell anybody anything. It's my little piece of the pie. Or when somebody asks me, I remember standing at shows. I did this in, you know, 2000, whatever. How many certifications you know? Oh, we did 100,000 TDI certs last year. Okay? It's not doing anything except boosting our own ego and not showing somebody else what truly is going on. Okay? So my hope is by sharing real data, we, can under, we have to understand where we are to truly have an impact. Okay? And then when we try something, if it goes up, if our numbers increase, hey, that worked. Or if we try something and it didn't work, the sport, okay, that didn't work. We can learn from it. But we have to start talking with one another as, a, um, as an industry so that we can help the whole market grow. I hope others follow our lead and release their data. Okay? That's my ultimate hope. What questions?
Thank you.